Hi, welcome back to another One Chart Lesson. Cherub by Ballpark Music. Uh, fantastic song and we're going to take you through how to play this in the style that you just saw, combining that fantastic melody with the chord strumming. Now, the way that I think is best to do this is by learning that melody first and then combining it with the chords. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a great technique to use when you're playing lots of songs uh, because it really lets you kind of spell out the melody which people really kind of hook on to and they recognize as well as carrying the rest of the song with the chords that you're playing. So what we're going to do is, is uh, work through the melody first. Now I've done two charts here. One has the melody spelt out in a single note fashion and the other one has the melody combined with the chords that you need to land on as you play that melody. So use whichever chart you find useful. They're both available for free download on the link below. And let's get started. I'm going to take you through these chords, not all at once like I usually do at the start of the video, but as we move through them during the song, because that seems to make a little bit more sense in this particular case. There's a few strange, not strange, there's a few alternate voicings of these chords, and we'll just really pick them up as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do, spell out this melody. Now, we, we need to start with putting our capo on the 6th fret, let's not forget that. And if you're not sure how to work out where to put your capo for various songs and, and uh, what you're doing with placement of your capo, then I'll put a link into my tutorial on how to figure out where to put your capo according to a very simple formula. Uh, that's a lesson below that I'll put a link to as well. So with our capo on the 6th fret, our chords are relatively easy and the melody starts on the E string 2nd fret, goes from 2 to 0, down to 3 on the B string, back to 0 on the, on the E string, 0 on the B string, 3rd fret there. So that's the first little phrase. Next bit we drop down to the 2nd fret B string, up to 3 again open B, then we come up to the 7th fret E string, down to 5, then 2, 5, open string E, up to 2nd fret, onto the 3rd fret B string. So, all up. And the last little bit we do is three on the B string, three, two, O. Oh. Okay? I recommend learning that melody and being able to play it and get it in your head first, and that'll make adding the chords much, much easier if you can do that if you can do that. Okay, so now we combine the chords. So the first chord we use is a D, and if we strum that on the first note, then the very second note we can lift our finger off that D string to play a D sus2. So we go D, and lift that off. Now even though we're playing a D sus2, we're not actually strumming the whole chord, we don't need to strum the whole chord, we want to kind of pick out these melodies. And during this, it doesn't really matter if you hit a single string to pick out that melody, or if you brush a few of the other strings adjacent to the melody note, it's all going to sound fine, and we're going to keep that rhythm going. So that's, that's the whole sort of thing behind this style is that you can... You'll hear that, even though I just kind of strummed those chords roughly, you'll hear that through it anyway. So coming back to that, D, lift that first finger, uh, lift that finger off the E string, play the open E, there's your third fret B string, third note in the melody there, ready to go. When we play the fourth note, which is that open E string, that's when you go to an E minor. So it's D, E minor, there's the open B string is the next note while you're still on the E minor, and then the next note is the third fret of the B string, 
which we land on at the same time as we play a G. Now we're going to play a G with that third fret B string on, which is not how everyone plays their G, but it's a perfectly acceptable way, and I think it's a preferable way to play, play the G chord because it sounds really nice and full. We're going to play it the other way throughout the song at certain points. I'll show you where, but for now, we're going to do a G like that. So. chord we do is an A7, then we're going to do an E minor 7, but we're going to leave off the bottom E string if we can. If you don't, it doesn't matter, it'll still sound good, but it sounds a little bit cleaner if you can avoid playing that bottom E string. So. on the G again. Now this is where we land on the other kind of G because we want that open B string in our melody. So we've gone so A7, E minor 7 with no bass note and then a normal G. As soon as we hit that normal G, let, leave your kind of middle two strings, the D and the G strings ringing because that carries that G chord through. But once you play that G, come straight up here to the seventh fret of the E string and with up strums, play the seventh fret E string and the fifth fret E string. And if you catch the B string and the G string open, as you do that, fine, good, preferable. All right, so. After that, we come and land on a D. The very next beat, as soon as we land on that D, we bring our pinky onto the fifth fret E string. That might be a stretch for some people, but it's worth working on because it's a nice thing to be able to do to your D, to your D chord. Right? Play that D chord, add the fifth fret E string with an up strum. Then we're going back to an A7. But as soon as we do, play the A7 with your first and second fingers this time. Doesn't matter what you played them with the first time through. But with this time, play with your first and second fingers because the very next beat, that melody note's going to go from the E open string to the second fret E string, which makes that an A7 add 13. Complicated name for a really nice sounding chord, but that's where the melody takes us, right? So A7, A7, add 13, G, and this time we want that G, for the melody we want that G to have that B string third fret. So. And then the last little thing we do is come back to an A7, but we're gonna start with the B string on the third fret which makes it an A7 sus4. Lift that third finger off the third fret of the B string and your second finger is already on the second fret of the B string, which makes it a normal A7. Lift it off again and you've got an A7 sus2. So you've gone A7 sus4, A7, A7 sus2. And that's, that's just that melody line carrying you through those last three notes of the melody, right? So, and keep your strumming going through that to keep the rhythm going, but learn how to spell out that melody with the chords first, and then the strumming will come easily. Once you can master that, then you can move on to the rest of the song, because the rest of the song is kind of based around 
that sort of rhythm and that sort of chord structure and, and the rest of it will actually fall into place. What I will point out is that when you uh, reach the third line in your one chart, which is the verse, the first time you get to the A7, it goes straight to the E minor seven. The second time it gets to the A7, you'll see just beneath that, I've written A7 add 13. That means that in that spot, I didn't have room to put it in the bar, but that means that when you hit the D, that's when you add the fifth fret E string. Then straight after that with the A7, that's where you add the 13. So whenever you see that, that's what's happening there. It's just that, you know, to keep the chart fairly clean and easy to read, I didn't want to try and mess it up by squeezing too many things in there or writing it too small. But that happens pretty much the same way throughout each time we do the intro slash hook and each time we do the verses. Then just after that, at the very last bar of that line, when you do the A7, it's got a little asterisk against it. Whenever you see that asterisk, that means you go A7 sus4, A7, A7 sus2, because you've got that melody line going 3, 2, 0 on the B string. Okay? I hope that's clear. It's really meant to kind of help you read this chart more easily and, and get used to playing those parts the way they happen kind of almost every time throughout that song. So the verse is the same. time through in that verse and in every verse from the D from the A7 he goes to a D and he puts the pinky on the third fret E string of the D and lifts it straight off during those two bars that's a D set that's a D sus4 back to a D then we move on to the chorus which is a really really pretty change we go notice flapping there is a notice flapping that melody do 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 we're doing that with the chords as well we're going which means you're doing the a7 add 13 a7 a7 sus4 and back to a7 so those four little chords those four little a7 chords in the same bar at the at the end of that chorus line that's what it sounds like there is a notice flapping times change too much maybe not enough I don't want to let it weigh you down this last time at the end of the verse or the end of the chorus sorry when we hit the A7 we just go up to that A7 sus4 back to the A7 then at the end of that line we hit the DS, which means del senio, which means go back to the senio, back to the sign, which is the little signature at the very top of your chart at the beginning of the intro. So we're back to the intro. Next verse. Goes through exactly the same way again, through another verse, through another chorus, the next time we go past that DS sign and into, you guessed it, the intro again. <laughs> On the 
onto another verse. So by now we're onto page two of your chart. We move through another verse, another chorus, played the same way, through the G, D, repeat sections, and then down to the coda, which is that. Have I changed too much? Maybe not. The song kind of shifts into high gear towards the end here and we're just playing the the outro again which is the same as the intro following that melody through there's a lot of production going on there's some distortion it's a really interesting uh finish to this song actually which is a really interesting song anyway but we go through that intro section again a total of four times and then it ends on an a7 held for four bars just cranking out towards the end of the song and finishes on the a7 you might think it finishes on the D. That sounds a little bit nice of an ending for this song. So I think it ends on an A7, but see what you think. End on a D, end on an A7. Either way is good. That's the whole song. Like I said, the key is to kind of spell out that melody first. Get used to the chords, even just play through the chords without the melody for a while. Get used to that chord pattern. Get used to the melody, then you can combine them. When you hear that melody in your head, do, 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 do. it's a lot easier to kind of play it and incorporate it with your chords. Please let me know how you go with this song. I'm really interested to hear how people are managing this chord and melody kind of style of playing together. And I hope it's really useful for you and I hope you have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Please come back and learn more songs with us and we'll see you here again soon. Thanks for watching.